So my question is that uh, we know that specifying an ibadah to a specific time or place, which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam nor the companions ever did, is considered a bid'ah. Ah. But I heard from someone that if we follow this rule, then the same thing would then apply to other things, such as uh, an example is Quran class, where a person goes to a certain place or institution at a certain time every day to read or memorize the Quran. So basically, he was saying that then such as Quran class would be considered as bid'ah if we follow this rule. So is this true? No, this is not true at all. And this is a deficiency in a person's intellectual powers of uh, uh, stemming and getting a ruling. And I am not proud of this, but I did this like 38 years ago with one of my shuyukh when I called him and I said to him, Sheikh, we know that wearing gold for men is haram. So by analogy, wouldn't be wearing diamond be haram because it's more expensive? And the guy just exploded in my face. Oh, thankfully, it was on the phone. And he said he was Egyptian. Who are you to make analogy? Analogy is made for men and men who are qualified, not the likes of you. And he showered me like for maybe 50 seconds. It felt like 50 hours. And I was sweating, cold sweat. And I said, Zakallah khair, and I hung up. And I was there in a trance maybe for I don't know how long. But it gave me a one heck of a lesson, which is totally true. Who are you to get these fatwas and to speak out of your whims and desires without studying al-qiyas and knowing what are the pillars, what are the conditions, how to compare this to that, al-far' al-asl. And this is a science and it has to be taught by a sheikh. And the sheikh has to give you examples so that expands your mind and understanding. Your person, or this person who's trying to water down innovation, they looked at anything that wasn't at the time of the Prophet and said, okay, this is also a bid'ah. Akhi, you've say, stated in the beginning, if you've noticed, or you watch the replay, that attaching a ibadah to a fard or a specific time, that makes it an innovation. Totally true. So if I decided to pray two rak'ahs after every salat of, let's say, um, uh, whatever salat, and attach it to it, which is not part of the sunnah, and consider that to be part of my daily routine. That would be an innovation because an innovation can be something related to time, something related to place, something related to quantity, something related to the nature of it. There are a number of things that can be associated with bid'ah. Now, if a person during the day decides that this time is most convenient for him to conduct dhikr. So a person, for example, fasts every Friday. He fasts Mondays and Thursdays, but he also fasts a Friday. Why? Because he says, I'm off. I don't have work. I don't think that fasting Friday is a virtue by itself, but because I fast Thursday, I'd love to fast a Friday, which helps me curb my sexual desires and gets closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Would we say that this is an innovation? Of course not. Fasting is recommended. And the reason he's doing it is appreciated. And the format is accepted. Fasting a day before or day after. Designating a Monday after Isha to give a dars in the masjid. There's nothing wrong in that. I'm not thinking that Monday is a day of a dars or that Isha is a preferred time for a dars. 
but this is a routine where I can make people understand and acquaint themselves with my schedule, which is after Isha prayer every Monday. This is not related to having a specific ibadah, like, for example, uh, saying Allahu Akbar Azza wa Jal. Some people say this every salat. Allahu Akbar Azza wa Jal. And when they say Sami Allahu liman hamida, they add something. Rabbana wa lakal hamdu wa shukr. These are innovations. The Prophet did not do it, as salam. Thanking Allah is good, but associating it in salat at its particular point of time and place is an innovation, and I hope this answers your question.